Thank you, Jeremy. So we've got a pretty interesting webinar here for you guys today. No shortcuts for doing things the right way. We're going to look at how a particular um, sporting gear manufacturing company uh, deals with 3D scanning and how that can help them in their, uh, it's not a super unique workflow, but they, they kind of take a different spin on it. So let's start off with a little bit of an overview of Creoform's portfolio of metrology equipment. So just a high level overview of all the scanners in the lineup. Um, we have both scanning and non-scanning equipment. Starting off on the top left, we have the GoScan Spark. This is our uh, more focused towards reverse engineering. It's a white light based scanning system. Um, it, it is a little bit less accurate and a little bit lower resolution at a lower equipment cost than some of the higher end um, equipment that we have available. Uh, and this really lends itself well to a reverse engineering application where uh, accuracy and resolution aren't as hypercritical as like a, uh, a quality control inspection application because we're going to be idealizing that 3D model on the end anyway. So GoScan Spark, mainly ideal for reverse engineering applications. Moving along to the right, we have the family of HandyScan scanners. So we have a couple of different models, um, increased performance, increased resolution, increased accuracy as we go up the family line. And these are now, as opposed to a white light scanner, like with the GoScan, this uses a laser light scanning technology. So the lasers allow for higher accuracy and higher resolution scans. So because we have that higher accuracy and higher resolution, this is where we start to look at uh, uh, certified metrology grade quality control solutions. So if we've got someone who's needing to scan for inspection purposes, we're going to start looking at this laser scanning solution here. Moving on to the right, we have the MetraScan system. This is a very similar laser-based system to the HandyScan, just targeted at larger volume parts. So we can hold tighter accuracies over larger volumes. Where with the GoScan and the HandyScan, we're kind of hanging it around parts of the half a foot up to about 10 feet kind of a range. With the MetraScan, we can go even larger than that. We can go up to something like the size of a car or a small van if we needed to get that entire uh, uh, surface scanned in one go and take measurements across that surface. So kind of small to medium with the GoScan and the HandyScan and then larger uh, with the MetraScan. Down to the bottom left, we have the MaxShot Elite system. So this is now, it is definitely a measurement system, but it's a, a totally different technology than the, the lasers and the white light that we had just been talking about. This uses uh, two-dimensional photographs, very specific type of photographs, but basically just photographs, and stitches them together to create a 3D reference volume that we can then take measurements in that 3D reference volume. Now, these are just point-to-point -point measurements, so think of anything, if you're familiar with a, a, a CMM machine or a probe, you're taking singular points, but you can build up circles, you can build up, build up surfaces with those points similar to this system. So we're taking single point data, but it's accurate over a very large volume. That's the key selling point is very large volume measurements with this. So whereas the MetraScan was like the size of a car to a small van, this is something even larger. You, you in fact can't even measure parts smaller than six feet with this. We, we just doesn't have enough volume to, to uh, go with the measurement algorithm. So we have customers in like the aerospace industry that are measuring from wingtip to wingtip on a jetliner with this kind of a, a system. It's very, very accurate down to the um, uh, tens or hundreds of micron level, depending on the, the measurement volume. So very, very accurate over very large distances, but only single point. Moving along the bottom in the middle there, we have the Cube R system. So this is uh, a very oversimplification of it is it's a MetraScan that's been bolted onto the end of a robotic arm. And all of this comes in a, a fully integrated robotic cell solution. So it has the computers and the servers to process. It has all the safety features of that robotic cell environment, automatic open, opening door, uh, lasers across the floor for safety, all of these things. So it's a, basically a drop-in solution. And you're really using this for high volume, uh, complex geometry parts that you're doing over and over and over again. So kind of the common application that, that I'll, I'll say that kind of, uh, it's a, the idea across is like car car body panels or car frames for the automotive industry. So it has a lot of unique surface curvature, but they're making it over and over and over again, and they want to inspect a, a good portion of that run. 
Whereas doing so with a, a probing technology where you're only taking single point data may not be enough data to fully define all that curvature well enough. Whereas with a scanner, we can place millions and millions of points along that curvature of the surface and get a very, very clean, good idea of how in spec that unique curvature of that surface is. So QBAR is for automated, uh, larger, complex parts. Finally, on the bottom right, we have the Handy Probe Elite System. So I mentioned probes and, and CMMs a few times. This is Creaform's kind of flavor of that solution. So this is a probe. Um, it's a little small in the picture, but we'll, we'll talk about it in more detail there. It does have a Renishaw Ruby probe tip that's very, if you're familiar with CMMs, it's the very same thing. So um, in, in that aspect, it's very similar to a CMM. How it's very different from a CMM is it's a wireless probe. So we're not bound by any X, Y, Z constraints of the frame of a CMM. We can really go uh, a much larger, more flexible volume with this system. And when we, we hit this later on in the slides, I'll explain exactly how that works and, and how this can be a wireless system. Very, very accurate single point data. So going into a little bit more detail with the GoScan Spark, if you remember, that's our white light reverse engineering scanner. So we've got a couple of stats on the right here, accuracy, measurement, resolution. You can see accuracy down to two thousandths, uh, measurement resolution about four thousandths of an inch. Um, one thing I do want to mention is the what does accuracy and what does resolution really mean? So accuracy is your point to surface accuracy. And what you kind of have to have in the back of your head as you're looking at that uh, spec is what are my tolerance requirements? So if you had a tolerance of plus or minus um, one tenth or, or one tenth of an inch, uh, thousands. You wouldn't use something like this where it's two thousands. That's about 20 times uh, more uncertainty than what you're requesting off of your tolerance. So you'd wanna use something that's, that's well within the, the accuracy of the scanner or your tolerance requirements. With measurement resolution, this is where we are looking at what Fine. what's the finest feature on your part surface that we can reliably capture. This resolution is, is very, very similar to if you think of resolution for a, a TV or a YouTube video. And the, the um, example I like to bring up all the time is hockey. So if you're watching hockey on an old tube TV with really low resolution, you can get a sense of what's going on with the game. You can see where everybody's flowing. You, you probably can't see exactly where the puck is, though. But you can, you can kind of see where it is based on the players are moving, but you can't actually see the puck itself. Whereas with a nice 4K screen TV, you can see that puck in very, very good detail. It's the same thing here. High resolution scans, we can see all sorts of very fine features. Low resolution scans, we can't see those fine features quite as well at the benefit of we don't have as much data in the scan. So it's trade-offs. So you can have very high accuracy scans with very low resolution and vice versa. So these are two independent factors that, that, that um, are spec'd out on all the scanning equipment to keep in mind. So one thing to note is that the accuracy is, it is what it is. So when, when I say this is a two plus or minus two thousandths accuracy scanner, that's what it is. It's always gonna perform at that accuracy. There's no real benefit to having a worse accuracy and we're doing the, the, the best that the hardware can do and the software can do in, in regards of the 2000s. Now with the resolution, we actually have tools in software to turn this resolution up or down based on our needs. So the reason we would wanna do that is if we have a very large feature that we're trying to measure that we don't need high resolution, we can turn the resolution coarser and we can save on file size and processing time, which is very, very nice, especially if you're doing a lot of scans over and over again. And then it's also very nice to have that ability to crank the resolution back up to high resolution if you need it for a specific project at the cost of increased file size and increased processing time. But that's the trade off there. So accuracy is pretty much set in stone there. Measurement resolution, we can kind of play with it a little bit based on what we need for the project at hand. So with the GoScan, we scan with 99 white light stripes. We have a scanning area of about 15 by 15 inches. And now that is, think of that as your paintbrush size. So we're painting across this car body with a 15 by 15 inch window of light to bring it into our scanning software. It doesn't mean we can only scan a part that's 15 by 15 inches. Um, we're taking 1.5 million measurement points per second with live mesh generation. Uh, it's all very 
built around the idea of ease of use. So we've got a lot of good hand tool or hand uh, controls directly on the scanner themselves. You see distance meter, multifunction buttons, um, all these different things with the goal of uh, we don't want to have to go back to the computer uh, too much during the scan. It interrupts workflow and, and takes a little bit longer. So by having a lot of these controls on the scanner itself, it allows us to operate uh, relatively independent of our laptop that we have with us. With the GoScan, we can capture color as well. That's one of the benefits of the white light, white light technology over the laser technology. Um, generally speaking, uh, I see this a lot more definitely in, in product design than I use in something like a manufacturing facility. So some customers find this very useful. Some customers don't need this at all. If you don't need this, let's say you are doing reverse engineering and, and the GoScan is the right scanner for you, um, but you're not interested in color at all. You can turn that color acquisition off as a software option and save on file size and processing time. So the color option is there, but it's not mandatory. Next up, we have the HandyScan Black Elite. So this is our, our laser-based metrology grade scanning solution. So you can see there we uh, have significantly better accuracy and measurement resolution than the GoScan at, at nine ten thousandths each versus the two thousandths and the four thousandths for the GoScan. Uh, we're using 11 blue laser crosses for a large scanning area and 1.3 million measurements per second. Like I said, this scanner is metrology grade, so you can, um, it comes with the uh, metrology grade certifications that you see below there. Um, these can be upkept on a yearly basis if required by your company. If it's not something that, that you require, uh, then you can just let that paperwork lapse out of date and continue on with your user level calibrations, which is what we're seeing on the left there. Um, so it comes with a calibration plate, basically a, a calibration artifact that you'll perform several scanning maneuvers on yourself. And then the software will do um, software level compensations for any drift in the cameras or exposure or exposure of the lasers or anything like that and bring that back within the spec. The Blue laser technology um, allows for a lot of versatility with surface finishes that we can scan. In the past, uh, we had used red laser technology, which was pretty much the, the industry standard. And the red lasers, they, they were very accurate. They grabbed surfaces well, but they had trouble with a few different surface finishes like shiny parts, dark parts, and clear parts. All of those three surface finishes kind of mess with the lasers in a different way to where the, the cameras can't interpret what the lasers are, are trying to reflect off the part, surface of the part. Shiny parts reflect it and, and send it everywhere in the, and scatter the lasers. Dark parts absorb the lasers and clear parts just allow the lasers to pass through. With the uh, addition of these more intense blue lasers as well as some increased or, or uh, improved um, mesh building algorithms on the software side of things, we've greatly improved our capture of shiny surfaces and dark surfaces. So we're able to get those two class of surfaces much easier with the new uh, scanning technology. Clear surfaces are still gonna be something that caused some issues at this point. Um, the lasers still just pass right through the clear and then the, the cameras really don't have anything to grab onto. That being said, it's not the end of the world if you have a clear part that you need to scan. There's several different options, a, a temporary solution is to uh, coat that part in a talc powder or a developer powder spray, just to obviously take away that clear uh, finish of the part and give like a nice matte white or matte gray finish on there for the lasers to uh, reflect off of. Or a more permanent solution would be to spray paint the part. And then that is going to be a nice, usually something like a, a gray primer or something like that will be picked up very, very easily by the scanner. So if you do have a clear part, it's not the end of the world. We've got a few tricks up our sleeves that we can still scan that surface uh, very reliably. Next, we've got the MetroScan. So this is our laser-based larger volume scanner system. And it actually is a two-part system. So the um, large dual cameras you see on the tripod that, that is taking up most of the slide here, that is called the C-Track. This is our, uh, our positioning system. The C-Track cameras that you see on the left and the right there, observe the hand scanner and transmit that data back to the controller to say, okay, the hand scanner is positioned at location X, Y, Z in space relative to my original uh, uh, coordinate system here. So the C-Track tracks the hand scanner while the hand scanner projects lasers onto the surface of the part to get that surface data. 
So hand scanner acquires the surface data. The C track tells us where to put that surface data. So you can see here we've got the C track uh, in the front foreground there, watching the scene as our operator scans the front of that car body there with the actual scanner itself. We've got seven laser crosses, and it's taking about 480,000 measurements per second. Um, with the MetraScan, we are, it is red laser, but we are actually able to scan in shiny and dark surfaces very successfully due to the, the, the fact that the C-Track is in the, the background there and this, the scanner is in the foreground doing separate jobs there. So this is a, a red light technology, but it, it can handle the darker surfaces and the shiner surfaces almost as well as, as the blue lasers of the HandyScan. Benefit of this system, as well as all the other systems we've talked about so far, is that they're portable. So we've got this very, very large casting part sitting out on the shop floor here. It's a lot easier for me to take my scanner and roll my scanner out to that part to take measurements than it is to get someone to get this part back into my quality lab so I can take measurements on this. So whether that's on our, out on our own shop floor or maybe I'm going out to a customer site and I need to get uh, uh, in a, a car or on a plane, I can take this scanning equipment with me and take my measurements there as opposed to have to move the part around. We've got the Handy Probe Elite here. So this is our wireless probing option that I talked about at the very end on that first slide. So you can see we've got that same C-Track system here. And now those cameras are going to tell us the position and orientation of our probe. And the probe, like I said, is wireless. It's wirelessly connected to the controller. And all the probe is saying, when, it, when you uh, uh, take a point with the probe, it just says, hey, record my position, record my position. So it's really not transmitting anything other than a, a yes, right? It's just saying, take a point, take a point. It's the C track that's really the brains behind the operation because it's telling us that it's at this exact XYZ location. And then once it hears that ping of record that point, it sends that point to the controller. So that's how this is able to be a wireless system here. So you can see we're using that on the shop floor. Same thing. We've got the C track watching us as we probe our part in the uh, volume of the C tracks cameras. Probe is metrology grade as well. Um, same thing with the certifications for keeping them up, keeping your paperwork up to date year over year. And again, if you if that's not required for your business, you don't need to do it. You can just stick with the user level calibrations that that come with the scanner itself. Now let's talk about the Max Shot next. So this is for uh, large volume photogrammetry products, right? We're taking photographs and we're stitching them together to create 3D reference volumes. So you can see there our, our part size range, two meters to 10 meters, we're, we're getting, and, and even bigger than that, uh, I've done before for sure. Uh, we're getting very large parts with this guy. The nice thing about this system is it's the first system on the market to actually be specifically designed for photogrammetry. In the past, this workflow was definitely possible. The workflow itself is nothing new, taking photographs and, and stitching them together in 3D space. But you had to use, uh, most commonly use like a DSLR camera and just traditional full color photographs that you would use and stitch those together. So it was a very kind of roundabout hacked together solution uh, until Creoform came out with the Max Shot. And now this system is specifically designed for metrology and photogrammetry purposes so it's got a lot of nice features that, that really lend itself to this kind of an application. The first one being is an instant live feedback, go, no go lasers. So you see in that middle picture on the bottom there, it actually projects an image of a green uh, uh, crosshair or a red X, depending on if your photo is good or not. If you were using a DSLR camera, you would just go out and take a thousand photographs. And when you get back to process them at your computer, you find out 500 of them are bad, but that's okay because you got 500 more. But you can imagine that a thousand photographs takes quite a while to take. Whereas with the Max Shot system, you know before you even take that photograph, if that crosshair is green, it's going to be a good photo. If that crosshair is red, don't take the photo because it's not going to be a good photo. It's basically just a waste of time, right? So you've got instant preemptive feedback that says, hey, this photo is going to be good or no, we need a different angle of the part. This system integrates really well with the Creoform scanners. It, it kind of uh, can fill the shoes of that, that C-Track system I was talking about, the cameras on the tripod. 
to build up our reference frame for us. And then we can get in for kind of the, the fine nitty gritty detail with something like the handy scan or the go scan. So we can get the large volume with the max shot and then just get our little fine details over here, a little bit over here, a little bit over here with the scanners themselves. Here's the cube R. So this is the robotically mounted scanner system. And you see here with the full cell um, uh, in its entire uh, turnkey solution. So you can see we've got a, a garage door there that won't let any personnel in or won't let any personnel in while it's operating. We also have some floor lasers that prevent anyone from being standing and, and the robot from moving while anyone's inside the cell. And then that cabinet you see on the bottom right there is actually a dual computer cabinet that handles the, the processing and the motion control of the robotic system. So it's a as an automatic calibration routine, which is very nice. So you could set it to calibrate every 10 scans, every 100 scans, whatever makes sense for your operation, um, as well as the fact that the fixture table itself rotates too. So you've got a lot of degrees of freedom to hit your parts from a lot of different angles and, and get a very, very complete scan. It's going to be very similar scanning specs to the metro scan we talked about, seven laser crosses, 480,000 measurements per second, same accuracies, that sort of thing. Um, like I said, because it is essentially a, a robotically mounted MetroScan system. Our software portfolio that we have uh, to be able to process all of this data, uh, across the top there, we have VX Elements, which is the software solution that's made by Creaform. Uh, we kind of consider this our day-to-day uh, -day solution. This, this works for 90% of our customers um, at a reduced cost. Now, if we have some functionality that we find that we can't get from a VX Elements type of software, we have additional higher end solutions at a higher cost and higher uh, learning curve with Geomagic and InnovMetric. So depending on, on what you guys need, um, that's part of my job and Jeremy's job as application engineers is to kind of uh, come in and, and help you guys figure out exactly what you're trying to do. And we'll say, yep, VX model can handle that totally fine or no, the X model doesn't have function A, B, and C, we need to go to something like Geomagic Design X for that and kind of get all your, your options laid out on the table there. But no matter what software you, you kind of go with, the, the two main workflows we see are, are pretty similar. So if we're going with reverse engineering across the top workflow there, we need to have our part, take our scanner, acquire the mesh across the surface of our part, from there, we're going to extract geometric entities from the mesh and convert those to CAD bodies. If we're going the quality control route, again, we start off with our part and our scanner and create a mesh with the scanner on the part. And then we use that mesh with a, uh, a CAD model that we already have as our gold standard. And we can take measurement comparisons from real world mesh to gold standard, perfect ideal world CAD model and check the deviations between the two of those. With reverse engineering, we have a couple of different workflows that we can look at. We have parametric modeling, surface modeling, or a hybrid method involving both parametric and surface modeling. We have a bunch of different mesh optimization tools for cleaning up scan data, filling holes, aligning scans, correcting errors, improving data quality, tons of very, very useful tools um, when you're going through and, and dealing with this kind of uh, organic, messy, real-world data that's not as nice as, as your CAD package, right? And, and that's the name of the game with dealing with these scans is this is all real-world stuff, right? It's it's not perfect for CAD, which is the exact reason why we're hanging out in this software is we're trying to get it perfect to pull it into CAD. For parametric modeling, we can use a bunch of different tools to basically idealize this. And this is why I was kind of talking about with the Go scan where accuracy isn't quite as critical as with quality control is because during this step, we can take measurements. Uh, let's say we're taking a measurement of a through hole and we measure it in at um, 0.127 inches, right? When we go to our CAD model, this is where we're gonna use our design intent and say, hey, maybe that should actually be 0.125 inches, right? So the fact that, that that physical hole itself was a little bit off, not even talking about the plus or minus accuracy of the scanner, we're going to end up idealizing that feature anyway. So that's what we're doing during this parametric modeling step. With surface modeling, this is a little bit less editable of a modeling workflow. It's more of a, 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 a parametric snapshot, or I, I shouldn't say parametric, a, a CAD-based, CAD-readable snapshot of that surface. So 
we can now select um, different faces of this hub down here. Um, we can use this as a tool to cut. We can use this as an extrude up to all that different things of, of having the faces and the edges available to us in CAD. But it would be very difficult for me to come in here and change the the arc of this radius here. Maybe, maybe I want it a little bit more pointy or a little bit more shallow. Using this surface modeling method in the VX model environment, that will be a little bit more difficult. Now, if that is something you would be interested in of taking this very, very complex curvature and, and changing it in a more parametric way, we do have more advanced software for that. So that was that GeoMagic Design X that I talked about. That's one of those functionalities where uh, you, you get a little, a little bit more bang for your buck out of the higher end software. Again, if that's something you guys are interested in, that's part of uh, the process of going through and, and kind of um, defining what you're looking for and, and going through that uh, demonstration and, and benchmarking process on our side of things. For quality control, this is where we're taking that mesh and we're overlaying it onto a CAD model, as you can see down here. And we're taking measurements from mesh to CAD to see how close our mesh is to our CAD. And this is a look at how that programming process works in the software. So you can see it's a very graphical process. So there I just selected a, a flat plate, a flat plane face to take measurements off of. There I'm selecting a cylindrical face to take measurements off of. Here I can select several surfaces at once to take measurements off of, and I'm going to key in um, what my acceptable tolerances ranges are on the, the toolbar on the left there. And then once this is all said and done, it will spit out a report that says, hey, of your 10 items you measured, everything's good except for number seven is out by five thousandths, and here's how it's out. So it's very customizable for what you're looking to do and gives very, very good data um, uh, across the entire surface of the park, not just single point data like with a probe. So now let's take a specific look at a case study with Scott Sports. So Scott Sports, like I said, is a, an extreme sporting good equipment manufacturer. And we're gonna be taking a specific look at this helmet that you see here. So this helmet's called the Free Ski, and we're gonna look at their design process and, and kind of their philosophy of how they created this and, and why they, they use scanning for their process. So Scott Sports, when they're designing sports performance gear, their main number one focus is safety. And that's what, that's what we mean by the, the title of this webinar. There's no shortcuts for doing things the right way in regards to safety with Scott Sports. So definitely safety number one, followed very, very closely by comfort and fit of the athlete. So comfort and fit, as well as safety and aerodynamics, um, lend themselves to some very organic complex shapes that you can see on, on all those helmets on the wall there, as well as a lot of other uh, equipment that they make. And Scott Sports, because of that complex curvature, they really like to start either with something that they already have existing that maybe they don't have a CAD model of, or taking a hand-based mod, hand model. So either molding something out of clay or carving it out of foam, something that the designers created with their own hands right in front of them, they can get a fit and a feel right away and they, they see what they like, and then they can digitize that with the 3D scanning solution. So this is, this is kind of a, a little bit less traditional workflow where we start with a physical prototype and then digitize it into CAD, whereas maybe at some other workflows you might be more familiar with, we start in CAD and then create a physical prototype off of that. So the guys at Scott Sports, they like to start with a physical model, scan it into CAD, make tweaks, maybe do some uh, simulations in CAD, then make tweaks, make those tweaks to another physical model and go back and forth and back and forth. And because that process of digitizing the physical model is so quick and easy, they can do that. They can do very, very many multiple back and forth uh, iterations of that tweaking and changing and, and getting it just right how they need to. So based on their experience, they, they had some experience um, sending some of these parts out to some service bureaus to get some scans back. And they, they really liked that quality, uh, as well as kind of starting to play around with some, some lower end entry level scanning solutions. So based on those two um, kind of dipping their big toe in and, and just testing the water, they really liked that workflow. And that's what inspired them to pull the trigger on a full professional system like the Handy Scan. It's a big project for us because we needed something new in our range to get something which is exactly what the market needs at the moment. 
So here we are in Givisier, uh, Switzerland. So this is the headquarter and that's where uh, all the development of the product is based. It's easy to design a nice helmet on the paper. I mean, this product would have been possible without the 3D scanner, but uh, trying to transform a hand model or something that you specify by hand takes a lot of time. We, we never start a product from scratch. We always base ourselves on something. And sometimes on the whole product, we don't have the 3D file or we have modified something. And this can happen in the sport industry, but in any kind of industry. We have to give the designer a base to work with. Then come the first prototype, uh, which is overworked by hand. So in this case, to transform that, to get that back to the real 3D, we need this kind of 3D scans. That makes uh, the job way easier and faster. So with the Andy scan, we are really flexible. It means that this is really an easy product. You just plug it in and you can go anywhere. You just need your computer. If it's in the design office or in the engineering office, if we have to scan something here in the showroom or wherever, I mean, this is really versatile. We can just take it wherever we, we need. Uh, the software, the VX element is really easy to use as well. A quick training and then you are up and running. Biggest challenge is really proportion. This is where we are spending a lot of time to refine all the small elements, so all the small surfaces, make sure that everything is working together, that when you have it in your head, you like it, when you put it on your head, you like it, and, yeah, and you are safe. So we use also the platform on this cam on other products like goggles. We use that as well on uh, liners, like ski boot liner, to, to be able to get that in 3D as well. Uh, we use the platform 3D scanner also on some body protector, for example. We have always some foam and some pieces like this where we cannot really uh, get that out of the 3D. So with this platform 3D scanner, we can scan that and get this kind of data in our 3D base. Now at Scott, I mean, we decided to do no shortcuts on our products and the goal is that all the team is involved in that, that all the team is putting all the efforts in this, uh, that everybody is proud about what we are doing here. Everybody wants to go on the pistes to, to test the product and to, to make sure that it really fulfills all the needs. Um, but the, the whole kind of gist of the video is, like I was talking about before, we're using multiple different iterations. We're using hand models of physical models to be able to scan into CAD back and forth, back and forth of uh, a workflow that really wouldn't be, pro wouldn't be possible without a 3D scanning solution like the HandyScan system. So to be able to take those physical models and pull them into CAD is something that's really, really invaluable um, for, for a company like Scott Sports.